proteins have a huge number of roles to play in our bodies. There are lots of different types of proteins. All proteins are built from amino acids, and amino acids, if you'll recall, have this general structure. They always have a side group, a functional group, right here, and that functional group can can um, exist in many different forms. There are functional groups that are polar, there are other functional groups that are non-polar. There's a huge variety of functional groups that can exist at that location. Um, the fact that we can attach amino acids together in sequence leads to a huge variety in terms of protein structures that we can form in our bodies. So that um, sequence is encoded ultimately in the DNA and then once that sequence is connected up together, once we've got a chain of amino acids connected together, what will happen is the electrostatic attractions and repulsions will help to fold that protein into its three-dimensional shape. And for proteins, that 3D shape is really key. We'll get into that on the next slide. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So different levels of protein structure. The primary structure, this is just referring to literally the sequence of amino acids. So maybe first there's an alanine, next maybe there's a glycine amino acid. Um, so primary structure is just the sequence that's encoded in the DNA. The secondary structure has to do with, um, actually I'm going to go to some pictures on the next slide. The secondary structure has to do with these sorts of sheets that can be formed. This is a beta pleated sheet. Um, that's being shown right here, but we could also form an alpha helix. Those would be two different examples of secondary structure. Okay, so we start with a primary sequence, and then depending on whether the amino acid side groups, depending on whether they attract each other or repel each other, that's going to push this chain just locally into having one of these two conformations, either a helix or a beta pleated sheet. Finally, going to yet the third level in protein structure, the tertiary level of protein structure, is the overall 3D conformation that the protein folds into. So this structure consists of some alpha helices and some other regions that might have some beta pleated sheets. Uh, and overall, this whole 3D structure is called the tertiary structure. Some proteins go on and form a quaternary structure as well. Hemoglobin does this. Um, this is something that, again, I just want to emphasize, not all proteins do this, but some do. There are some special proteins that do this. Basically what's happening is there are multiple protein subunits that are joining together in order to form this more complex structure. So that would be an example of quaternary structure. The tertiary structure, this one is really key for function. Um, enzymes, for example, enzymes are proteins, and their three-dimensional shape is what determines their enzymatic activity, which reactions they're going to be able to facilitate or not. Proteins are interesting because they can combine with other types of biological molecules. We can combine proteins and carbohydrates, attach a bit of carbohydrate onto a protein, and the result of that is called a glycoprotein. We will be mentioning, we will be talking about glycoproteins going forward, so that would be one to remember. There are a lot of glycoproteins in cell membranes, and they have important roles with um, cell communication, the cell being able to interface with its environment. So glycoproteins, we will definitely be mentioning. Lipoproteins, this is a combination of a protein with a lipid, as you might guess. And uh, these are also found in cell membranes. They can also be found floating in the blood. They can act as carrier molecules to sort of shuttle other things around. So lots of different um, structural possibilities for proteins. And because of that, there are lots of different functions possible for proteins as well. Just to give some examples of protein functions. Okay, definitely some proteins are structural. Um, for example, in connective tissue, okay, lots of collagen fibers, those are protein, and they have a very strong role. They are helping to stabilize structures. Again, other uh, proteins work as enzymes, which facilitate chemical reactions. Other proteins act as antibodies. We will talk about these when we get to the chapter on the immune system. Antibodies are a type of protein. Some proteins act as receptors, particularly on the cell surface. So we'll come, come back to that in the next chapter. And then we mentioned this one in passing. Some proteins can act as carriers, things that shuttle around other substances. 
um, either across a cell membrane or in, in circulation in the blood to carry something from one location in the body to another.